I suppose you was wondering what I is doing here. But it's all official, see? I is a guest of the Royal Hairy Force. Why? Because it seems as though some of you Brill Cream boys needs a bit of old-fashioned army discipline. It seems that, despite the laid-down procedures, some of you does not know how to operate these tornadoes and other hairy planes safely and efficiently when in a hardened environment. When you were stuck inside one of these year concrete buildings known as Hazes. So, I is off now to get some kip. In the morning, you will be here smartly dressed and paying attention, because I will have one or two things to say to you. By the way, while I say is you, you will not refer to me as a pongo or a brown job fallout. I'm going to tell you why the Hair Force has these houses, has these houses in the first place. Until only a few years ago, all your little aeroplanes was operated like these here of Victoria tankers, outside on the ground, which makes them easy targets for any enemy what might fly over and drop nasty bombs on them, or blow them all to bits with rockets and machine guns. So. The Hair Force decided to put up concrete buildings just like these. And... Concrete buildings like this, which are placed miles from bloody anywhere, so nobody can find them. Come on, you lot, move yourselves! Out the double, move yourselves! Out, 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 out! Let me have a new. <laughs> These buildings is bomb, bullet, and rocket proof, and the entire handling of the aeroplane, refueling, maintenance, and weapon loading takes place inside. Although this house here is one of the new types, it is not particularly spacious. Some of the older types is even less particularly spacious, which is why you've got to be very careful where you put things. These pretty yellow lines is not here for fun. They indicate storage areas. Armaments here, tools and equipment there, and so on. A place for everything, and everything must be in its place. Why? Because we want to prevent accidents, doesn't we? Because accidents, or the preventing of accidents, is what this film is all about. Now, this here place may be bomb-proof, but it is not people-proof. I am now going to mention I is now going to mention some of the typical hazards one. Shut up! What's going on, you silly shivers? Turn your lights on, man! Turn it off! Pull the plug out! As you can see, jet blast is a particularly nasty problem, but uh, losing my beret is uh, nothing compared to what some of you lot could lose.
what I mean? That could have been very nasty. Jet blast can be dangerous. This means that all you flyboys must remember not to put your foot down. And for you lot what makes up the ground crew, what was that staging doing there in the first place? Furthermore, this little item could be just as dangerous. Jet blast could make it fly through the air like a dagger. And as far as the aeroplane is concerned, it could be sucked into one of the engine intakes and mess up the piston rings, spark plugs, and all them other complicated bits inside. Remember then what I said before, a place for everything and everything in its place. There's a place for these too. On your ears, cause engines can cause you to go deaf and the chances are you'd never notice it happening until it was too late. So you have been warned. If, like me, you'd have a six-mile run every morning just to keep fit, you will know how important it is to get plenty of fresh air into them lungs. <coughs> fresh air is important to all of us. It keeps us alive, so we does not want to contaminate it. The fresh air with lots of nasty, horrible fumes. But that is exactly what some of you lot does every day. When you bung a few gallons of four-star into them engines, you may get a set of matching luggage, dinner for two in Swapham, and a walk. But what you will get is exhaust fumes. These fumes is not particularly nice, and... We have to do what we can do to keep them to a minimum. For example, we have to make sure the rear doors are open and that the bloody ventilation is on! What is more, there is local rules and procedures concerning fumes and your health. Make sure that you know them. You also have to use your common sense. And for you people in charge of the Sea Off team, do not run aeroplane engines or engines powering fuel boozers and uh, GPOs for longer than necessary. And whilst we is on the subject, Remember that the inside of a has is not a racetrack. All vehicles entering or leaving a has should do so with care. A particular point of interest for you supervisors. Or it should be. If you is a supervisor, then you cannot be supervisoring sitting down reading page three of the sun. You has got to get out there. You's got to get out on the job. Got it? Right. Time for a spot of lunch. This year is known as an HPS, or Hardened Personnel Shelter. It is where you ground crew boys lives, sleeps and eats, under exercise conditions, or when at war. be nasty whatever it is, but in a has, a spillage can be downright lethal. This one right here could cause a nasty slip or fall. Make sure you clean it up. And make sure you've got the material you need to clean it up. This spillage could be much worse. It's a fuel spillage and could cause a fire. Again, the remedy is so simple, even you lot could understand it. Clean it up. When I was up the jungle, many a time and oft, I found myself in dire need of a quick one. A quick fire, that is. 
so that them Nancy boys of mine could brew up a cup of char. But if you had a quick fire in by here, or even a slow one, it could be good night, Vienna. As already mentioned, the importance of putting things in their right place. And as far as fire is concerned, this is fundamental. You may need to use this extinguisher very quickly, and it may take you only seconds to move this cable, which should not be here. But when you have a fire on your hands, every second counts, Corporal. Also, fire notices and alarm points must be kept clear of obstructions. A fire in a house could be much more serious than in anywhere else. Smoke will build up more quickly and last longer. So will heat. If you does not put out the fire quickly, it may put you out. <laughs> This one's for you, Blodwin. Oh, right. Um, now uh, I'm going to show you some more hazards involved when the aeroplane is actually moving in and out of the house. As you can see, the first thing we do is when the aeroplane is going to come out is open the doors. But first, make sure there is nobody, not nothing, in the way. Come on, lovely boy, let's be having you move yourself, move yourself. Try very sure, little. Now these doors, it takes a couple of minutes to open, which gives me just enough time to tell you one or two other things about doors. Because all doors in hardened buildings is blast proof, they is very heavy. Do not get your fingers caught in them. You may not get them back. In dear old Blighty, we have stores what locks into position automatically. But the houses in Germany is the old type, still effective against the enemy, but they is slightly different in design. Sure, you have to make sure that the doors is secured, because if you didn't, and a door started to move in just as a hairy plane was moving out, the result could be highly serious. you does not realize it. These little aeroplanes cost around 14 million pound each. And a wingtip costs 6% of that, which is a... Uh, them wings cost a bloody fortune. So he does not want them smashed hard up against a block of concrete. But it's not just the money, is it? I mean, your little aeroplanes is part of our defense. If they is out of commission, they cannot be defensing us, can they? Avoiding that their sort of accident means everybody knowing what they is doing. Communicationing, see? It's at the heart of every safe, efficient sea off team. And that includes you flyboys. When you climb up in that cockpit to play with your little computers, do not forget your boys on the ground. Now, let's see if this sort of sea off team can get the aeroplane out of the house without hitting anything. See that? Everyone knows what they is doing. No titting about. Well done, those boys. No taking chances for them. Now then, 
Getting your aeroplanes away safely is one thing, but sooner or later, they is going to come back. Unless the flyboy in the back seat has spilled coffee all over his map. Now inside the Haz, the CN team is already preparing for the aircraft's return. Forward planning, see. Whichever part you play in the Haz operation, make sure you leave plenty of time. That way, you minimize the chances of making a mistake, cause you was not having to rush about. Got it? This by sure is what is known as a winch, and a winch is what is used to bring the hairy plane safely back into the Haz. And this is the winch cable, stretched out, ready for action. It is also stretched out to trip up them people what does not bother to look where they is going. When you attach the cable, Make sure you stick it on the oak at the back of the hairy plane. Since there is only one oak, you should not have too much trouble finding it. Brakes off, sir. When everybody is ready, in a good position so that they can see exactly what is going on, the winching process may begin. Not before. Got it? Right then, steady as she goes. you lot learned so far. What you has learned is that them hazards can be dangerous places. You has seen many of the main hazards what can cause accidents, and you now understands that you has a part to play in preventing them accidents. But what happens when the going gets tough? When you gets one of them tack shaggy them exercises what nobody is expecting? Well, be like me. Never get caught with your trousers down. These tack These tack These exercises is, as you know, designed to measure your readiness for war. For wearing this lot can make things difficult. Very difficult.
Under exercise conditions, a has can be even more dangerous than when, than when you is not under exercise conditions. So, you need to take extra care. Got it. Right. Eyes off. And, lovely boys and girls, I hope that you is now a lot wiser than before. When we started, hey, don't hey. touch me! Where's the leather on out there? What? Where's the leather on there? Shut up, you is inedible! Where's the leather on there? Shut up! As I was saying, before I was so rudely interrupted, I hope that you now know more than you did before. And remember, always be on the lookout for accidents. Would you like a taxi, sir? You horrible little man, you. Just get out of my sight. Move yourself, move yourself! You, you, that was given to me, that was. By General Sir Percy Quick Jodrell. After saving his life when he was shot in the Balkans. He was never quite the same after that, you know. He joined the Dagenham Gold Pipers as a military advisor. <laughs> 